Okay. You are welcome to the largest domain of a function. Now, the largest domain of a function is a set of possible values of x, which makes the function defined. So there are some possible values of x that you can insert into the function, which will make it defined. What does it? What do we mean by making something defined? There are some values that you fix here, which can destroy the whole function or make it undefined when you punch a calculator or mark error. Now, any value you put here, which will render it meaningless, which will render it mark error or render it syntax error or render it undefined, will not help the function. So the domain is the function of the, 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 uh, the values of x which will make the function defined. Now watch, the domain excludes the values of x which makes the function undefined, as I just said. That is, if such values exist, if they exist, please identify them. Good. So state the largest domain, or the largest possible domain of the following functions. You see we have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 examples here. Now, before we go through all these six examples, you can state all forms of domains. There is no domain that you can state after going through this. Right? You can test and try out and see. So, if you are ready, let's go. Now, graduate calculators, you'll be doing something for me. Uh, look at the first one. F of x map onto 1 minus 2x. Now, what kind of value do you think you can fix here to make this function undefined? So, 1 may say 0. Let's see. 1 minus 0 will still give you 1. What is that answer? Good. Let's try something. Now, let's go. Grab a calculator. Point this for me. Point 3 over 0 and try 0 over 3. Let's go. 3 over 0. What do you get? Point please. 3 over 0 is what? Math what? Error. Now, what is 0 over 3? Did you observe something here? 3 over 3. 3 over 0 is math error. 0 over 3 is 0. Do you know 0 is a number? Please define. 0 is defined, but that is not defined. There's an error in mathematics, math error. Do you understand? Good. So, if I do something about this function that gets 0, does it mean it's undefined? Another name for math error is called undefined, okay? It's undefined, so how can you treat it? Undefined. Good. So, let's go. Do you have any number that you can fix here which will make this thing undefined as you saw? Even if you put a negative number here, it will still be an answer, right? Good. Cool. It means this is okay. All numbers can work for the first one, right? Do you believe that? So that is how we state. So you're watching here. This is the domain. As a such that x belongs to all set of real numbers. So that is our domain. That's all. As an answer. English, in English, S is such that X belongs to all set of real numbers. This is a mathematical language. S is such that X belongs, this belongs, right? All set of real numbers are. Not real numbers, real numbers, right? R. So, so that's the domain. I have finished stating my domain. So you watch, guys. I mean, uh, this is the old ones. Yes. She's asking whether that means that this time we all belong to all set of real numbers. I say yes. Even if you don't agree with me, test and see. You try with zero, it's defined. You try with negative one, it's still defined. Now, you try with half, it will still be defined. Now, there is no number at all that I can think of which will make this thing undefined when you punch in a calculator. It means all sort of random and way. Now, if there is a particular number which will destroy the existence of this function, we will include it by saying, accept. But there's no accept. Are you okay? I look at the next one when I finish, you get them down. That's one. Now, roots of what? This 2x minus 1, all roots. You see, we don't have a square root of a negative number, right? This does not really exist. We can have a negative number in life, but not a square root of a negative number. Please point and see. Try for me. Minus 4 squared. No, just minus 4 root 4. Square root of minus 4. Try for me. Math error. You can have a square root of a negative number, right? But you can have a negative number, but not a square root. Excuse me. You can also have this. It's possible in math, okay? But not a square root of a negative number. It's math error. That's what you got, right? Good. 
So since you cannot have that, then it's how to go about questions like this. It means this question is right. All numbers that is less than zero, negative, are going to make it undefined. So if you want to track them, that is where we track from. That's the point of contact. So that is how it goes, right? Since there is no square root of a negative number. Good. So it follows that 2x minus 1 is less than 0. Why did I use less than here? Look at it well. You see, I want to strike a precedence for functions like this. Our targets are the ones less than 0. We want to get them, okay? You see, the less than 0 are negatives. Good. So you see, this is different from this. So let's go. So there is 2x less than positive 1 over there. Up is line. So you have 2x less than 1, 2, 2. x is less than what? Half. So x is less than half. So how do we state this domain here? So the domain. As a subject, x belongs to all set of real numbers. Yes. All set of real numbers can work. A set that x should never be less than half. We will prove and see. S should not be less than what's half. This is the domain. Now let's see a simple proof here. Let's hope you're okay. All sort of random numbers are welcome to accept that x should not be less than what half. That's what's something here. Do you know any number less than half? That means. Is it 3 over 4? Check and see. Any number less than half? It's 0, right? It's going to be 0. 0 is less than half, right? Any number less than half? 0 is less than half, right? Okay, then let's write 0 and see. Watch. <laughs> Syntax error. So it's true. So if I don't bring this a set, you are trying to tell us that all numbers can work. But there's an exception. You have to indicate it. Why if somebody tells you, I say, I saw something which cannot really work. Is that now? Is, is it that time that you say, oh, okay, I forgot and I didn't know. No, no, no. There's an exception here. So you try zero is less than this. You see it's zero. In the number you see less than half will render the same math error. Do you understand? So then you have to state the domain for this. Now, oh, oh okay, I've explained my proof. Okay. So this is two zero minus one root of this minus one undefined, right? Undefined. One over four is also less than what? Yes, if you put it there, you still get a negative, which will still render it undefined. I'll just clear. Okay. Now let's look at our third function. So please take it easy. Over here. Oh, look at the third function. Now, what do you see? I think it's very simple. What do you think? Do you think there's a number which can destroy this? Even if I put 0 there, 1 is an answer. If I put negative 4 there, negative 4 squared will give me 16. Because I have to put it in parentheses on the calculator. So do you think there is any number which can render this? Undefined. I'm asking. No. No, eh? No. So the domain. S is such that S is defined for all set of real numbers. Is there any exception? No. We hope you are getting it now. Now let's look at the next one. I mean, what you see there is a rational function. This is a rational function. What's a rational function? A story. We have a case on top and a case down. That's a rational function, right? But how do you treat rational functions? You just equate their denominator towards zero. Equate their denominator towards zero. Then you get the exception for that. So for rational functions, so for rational functions, I told you guys to identify rational functions, right? You have expressions on top, expressions there, right? Rational functions equate denominator towards zero. Equate the not mean meter to zero. Implication. Let's go. 
S minus 3 equals 0. S equals 3. Domain. S is defined for all set of real numbers. That is very true. Is there any exception? Yes. There is an exception. Except that X should not be equal to what? 3. Let's test. Do you know that if you put 3 here, minus 3, you get 0. The square root of 0 will still give you. So, okay, this will be 0, right? 3 minus 3 will give you 0. You see that? Do you know that even if you have here as the total of 6 over 0, will give you only 5. So, do you see that? So, that is how to treat transfer functions. You can have this. So, let's look at V. V. Good. Solution to V. Uh, that is similar to II, as you can see here, right? So we still follow the same precedence. Since there is no square root of a negative number, right? So our target is to get the numbers less than zero, right? So we use less than. So implication, that is 1 minus x squared less than zero. You know this difference of two squares? Yes, it is. That's why you can't see one square in here. One square is still one. So that is. 1 plus x, 1 minus x less than 0. I hope you agree. That's very true. So the whole of this. Agree? Just like you solving quadratic expression, trying to find the roots. So you have x less than negative 1. Also, you have 1 minus x less than 0. So I can maintain this here, minus 1x less than minus 1. You agree? Now, inequalities. If you divide 2 by a negative number, the inequality sign what changes. Do you remember? Please, the rule is not if you see a negative number. No. The rule is if you divide 2 by a negative number, not seeing. So I divided 2, as you can see. How is that? Okay, so I have this and I have that. Now let's look at our domain. Those things you see there, as usual, will be exceptions, right? S belongs to all set of real numbers, except that X should not be less than minus 1, or it should not be greater than what? 1. Such things will render this mark error. Are you okay? So X should not be, so I have to cancel this, or X should not be greater than what? 1. Good. Got it. Okay, now the last question here. VI. Look at this. What condition do we see here? We see a rational function condition here, right? Up and down. At the same time, one may rational like say, I can see this square root condition here where the stuff should be less than. Good. So one student goes this way. Say, I want to equate this one to zero because I see a rational function. He is right. Another one comes in this way. Say, I also want to make this one less than because I see what a root. You see, they are all right. Since they are all right, what do you think? That means we are not right. They are right. So, we need to help them. Right? They are all right. Then, why don't we join them together? There's a simple thing. If equal to is correct, less than is also correct. And you make it less than or equal to. So those who want equal to will go for this. Those who want less than will go for this. That's a simple thing. Now let's so. So the condition here is that this should be less than zero. Now rational function condition can also render it equal to what? Zero. We are alright, right? Correct. Let it be less than or equal to. It's called less than or equal to. Not less than and equal to. That's an inequality sign, right? Good. Case close. No more troubles. Agree? Domain. Which one? S is such that x belongs to all set of real numbers. As such that x should not be less than or equal to what? One. So that is the end of stating domains in the function. Good.